If you want to come and do engineering, UK is incredible for it. Uh, if you're quite screwed on in terms of what type of engineering you want to go to, would you say Imperial is the best choice over Cambridge and Oxford? But when people read CVs these days, they don't want to see a machine. No. They want to see a human. It's 안녕하세요 여러분 오늘은 제 임페리얼 대학교 동기였던 친구 하나의 이력서를 들고 왔는데요 이 친구가 이제 서류 전형을 통과하는 게 거의 100%로 통과를 하더라고요 저는 이제 신경학 그리고 경영을 전공한 반면에 이 친구는 어 이제 임페리얼 대학교에서 가장 어렵다고 하는 과인 이제 항공 엔지니어링 과를 졸업을 했기 때문에 여러분들이 좀더 유익하게 보실 수 있는 또 다른 이력서의 예시가 되지 않을까 싶어서 오늘 영상을 준비했어요 I'm Jack um, I'm Min's friend. I studied at Imperial, same as Min. I did a master's in aeronautical engineering. Just wanted to share with you how I would uh, go about writing a CV. It's often the first impression that someone in a company has, so it's worth getting it right. For an engineering science financial CV, you're just looking at getting that information across yep. in a short, sweet manner. Would you say the companies that you've applied for are quite big firms or are they medium, small sized firms? Mo majority of them are larger firms because those are offering graduate programs are those that are larger firms. Yeah. What do you think your strongest points have been within your CV? Why do you think you've gone through every single time? Um, I think it's well structured, it's clear, it's concise and honestly doing things speaks for itself. If you write that you've done work experience, it doesn't matter how you write about how you did your work experience. If you've done it, they know you've done it and they like it. So if you need to improve your CV, you might want to reflect whether you need simply more experience. Do you yeah. need to put yourself out there a bit more? It's like icing a cake. The work experience is the cake, and then the icing, icing. is the CV. Yeah. You're not gonna have an icing if you don't have a cake, so you need the cake. What do you think your most significant factor in your CV is? So I think for me it has to be MBDA because that work experience is in a big company that just immediately should hit home with employers that I've got experience in a big company like that. Is a startup just as good do you think? Um, it depends where you're going into. With engineering um, having a big name on your CV is very useful I would say. But don't look down on doing work experience with smaller firms and stuff, because that's just as important. I think um, nowadays yeah. also we're shifting towards having less discrimination against smaller companies. One thing that's worth saying is in a big engineering firm you will get exposed to more things than you would in a small one, so that's kind of why bigger ones are preferred at a lower stage in your career. Once you get towards the higher end, once you get older, the smaller the company arguably the better. You need to still try and work out what you want to do with your life. Again, once you become a graduate, Unless you're doing a PhD, you probably still don't exactly know which part of engineering you want to go into. So working in a big company allows a bit of flexibility with that, but obviously as you progress up through your career, you'll find your pathway. If you're quite screwed on in terms of what type of engineering you want to go to, would you say Imperial is the best choice over Cambridge and Oxford? Yes. Mm -hmm. Cambridge, very good for engineering, but it's worth saying that at Cambridge, you have to do a general engineering degree. So when you come out the other end, you might not be so specialist in what you want to do. So just be just be wary of that. In my experience, I've only ever had one firm that um, Oxbridge was a, a major thing for. Go to Oxbridge if you're really bothered about what the course offers, of but course. do not go there for the name necessarily. No. Imperial's just as good. Would you agree that aeronautical engineering at Imperial College is arguably the hardest degree, one of the hardest degrees you can get at Imperial College? Well, I don't want to blow my own trumpet, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty intense. I just call it an applied maths degree, that's all it is. Basically. Yeah. As long as you've got a degree from a Russell Group University, Russell Group being the top 20 universities, top 20, 20 universities. 25, which is 13, very, something yeah, like that, it's very in doable. the UK. As long as you've got that and you've got your degree in a relevant subject, mm. And with a lot of engineering, it's very useful to have a master's. Mm. If you've got those, all they care about is what's your experience? Can you do the tests that they're going to give you? And can you do an interview? And can you work in a team, basically? First CV, I was, you're probably looking at halfway through my second year. My feeling was I would apply for some summer internships between my second and third year just to see what was going. When did you apply for your internship at MBDA? So it's also worth saying graduate roles and internships, you apply for them um, in the uh, September, October and November before the next year's summer, essentially. So, so if, you're, if you want to get an internship 
opportunity during the summer holidays, you would apply the year before that in the winter. Essentially, is that yeah, correct? Correct, yeah. What we're looking for is just a small paragraph or two, I've got two paragraphs basically, where I just outline what I'm looking for in terms of a job and then also just highlighting your strengths essentially. So that's incredibly important and some people will tell you not to do that, but I would heavily recommend doing it. Um, it really does have some benefits and allows you, especially in applications where there's no cover letter, to actually talk a little bit about yourself. In my first um, paragraph, I literally detail exactly what I've done in terms of major work experience and my major education, i.e. your university education. And then I would also, I also talk about some of my key skills, very key skills, and also my proficiency in certain uh, software programs because I see. comes with engineering is it's extremely important I see. to show what you're proficient in in terms of coding that's and great. simulation tools because yep. that's always very key for engineering jobs. My second paragraph is less important I would say and um, it just goes into a little bit more detail on the projects I've undertaken something that I would ordinarily put in my cover letter but as I say, for applications with no cover letter, I would recommend doing it because you can provide a little bit more detail and sew together um, some of the projects that you've done. Then would you say you would take this out if the application requires a cover letter? Yes, I would say taking that So you that would take this out, out. okay, yeah. so this will be too long pretty much if you've got a cover letter yeah. as well. So that's a very important point to point out. Would you like to talk us through the general structure? So of it's important to initially lay out what work experience you have. That is fundamentally the most important thing you have on your CV. Yeah. You may believe that your university degree is most important, but actually what they're looking for is you to have shown that you're capable of working in a work environment, very which is very point. different to an academic environment. Very good. That's point. something that I would be keen to point out because I feel like uh, many people coming in from overseas don't quite recognize that. Mm. And especially if you're looking for a job in this country, like having work experience is extremely important no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. You'll laugh at mine, having done a university degree at Imperial College, that my current job is essentially just delivering um, people's groceries on a daily basis. You're a key uh, worker in, in the crisis. <laughs> I'm a key worker. Yeah, it's very important. But um, yeah, I drive a £60,000 Mercedes. As you can see here, um, the most important work experience I have was last summer working at MBDA as a systems engineer and therefore it takes up the biggest amount of space in okay. the professional experience section. Mm -hmm. That's how it should look, okay? You should be putting more effort into the areas that you believe are more important for the role that you're looking for. You'll see that in the application forms. They'll always say, make sure you identify the areas that are of most interest to us. So the experience that's most applicable to work job that you're applying for, basically. Essentially, I've just summarized some of the projects that I undertook in that year. That's all it needs to be. There's no adjectives, there's no great, there's no amazing, Amazing. there's none of that literally laying out what I did that's it Great. it's no saying I did incredibly well or anything like that that's not what a CV is for it's just saying what you've done okay um, I have a couple of other things in there brand ambassador and some work experience from a while ago but it's also worth saying that you must rank them in order of what you've done not the order of importance you have to order it in terms of timeline yeah Okay, exactly. so that's a really important so tip. So form a timeline. And I see also you've used numbers, which is one of the tips I mentioned in my video to really quantify the work yeah. you've done. In a CV, it's important because all it is is about information. Information, information, information. Literally, you should be able to look at a CV, scan it through for like two minutes, and you should basically be able to tell what they've done that's most important to Very the good. company. Okay? Yeah. yeah, so moving on to education. Yeah. Obviously, there's a huge gap here for education and especially my university one basically detailed all the projects and as you can see I've paid particular attention to detail to my individual master's project and also my group design project uh -huh. and specifically I like to talk about some of the programs I've used. Project work is very key for engineering. Most engineering jobs require your ability to work in projects. Importance of um, actually doing modules and certain modules is not so important when you're applying for a, a general engineering role. Um, if you're to write a CV for a PhD, it's very important to talk about modules that you've done that are relevant to your PhD. Yeah. So for these engineering roles, the importance of project work is superior to that of mm -hmm. Um, module. Uh -huh, I see. I'm just curious, personally in my video said not to include college 
um, to keep it down to one page, but obviously you've included college and why is that important? So uh, mine's on two pages. I don't know how important it is, but I feel like it's important just because um, it shows your background essentially, that you did maths, you did physics, you did chemistry. Would you agree that if you're keeping it to one page, you do not include college yeah, experience? it's not necessary. It's not necessary. Okay, let's move on. It says experience related to work. Team leading organization in extracurricular activities. So it's basically extracurricular activities, yeah, but so why it, have you labeled it as experience related to work? Because it is very much related to work. The examples you see here are from captaining rugby teams and basically being the lead organizer of uh, the rugby teams I played for. And that requires exactly the same capabilities that were required to complete project work, both in my summer internship and in university. So it's somewhat separate, but it shows the same capabilities and all of the capabilities I'm showing here are relevant to the engineering roles I'm applying to. Then you've got hobbies and interests. And I've been trying to tell people that, you know, in, in South Korea, I feel like some people might worry that some of their hobbies may not be directly related to the role that they are applying to. But when people read CVs these days, they don't want to see a machine. No. They want to see a human. And everyone has interest outside of what they do. As you can see, I'm quite a sporty person, so there's a lot of sport in there. Yeah. Um, and I include my flying thing because I think that's quite important because it shows, again, that I have some capabilities that are required in engineering mm -hmm. roles. Yeah. But yeah, it's just there really to show human side. Mm -hmm. Final section, which is additional skills. You've got, uh, you know, grade eight, six. These things are basically kind of awards that you get given by doing music lessons in school, I think. Yeah, so you do music exams. But yeah, I've just included those. Again, just to provide a little bit of human element. The UK driving license is very important. Really? A lot of jobs in this country, certainly engineering roles that are not based in the big cities, like London and Bristol and that, mm. they often require you to have a clean UK driving license, just so that I you see. have the ability to move around yourself. For Koreans, you can have a um, international, international driving, driving license, license. Which is now compatible with the UK driving license, so you can easily start driving here without having to convert it into any, anything else. So I would put that on there, if yeah, that's what that's you Yeah, that's great. How do you feel now with your careers, and what have you got in the options, and what are you trying to weigh out? Um, so at the moment I have a role for September next year at MBDA, which I got purely based on my performance in the summer internship. Very if you do well in your internships, they're more than likely to give you a job afterwards where you don't even need to apply for anything else. On top of that, I've just tried applying in a couple of other places just to see what else is out there. Because MBDA is such a big company, why would you look at other options? Many of these companies are quite quiet on what they do. So actually doing the application process, you realize what they truly do and where that role might take you. And having known what I did at MBDA and what I would be doing at MBDA, I just wanted to see what, what other roles offered. You know, whether you'd be happy to show people your cover letter if people are interested. Comment down. Can you not do this? <laughs> <laughs> Let us know in the comments, yeah. And you would be happy to yeah, yeah, take yeah, it through. Yeah. Very generous. And also, if you have any specific questions about CV, maybe ask. try and ask them in English to test out your English. That's if you want to come and do engineering, UK is incredible for it. We're the same as the Germans. We do things very well. That's great. Okay, well, thank you so much for being on the camera today. And um, thank Cheers you so much for watching Good my video as well today. And I really appreciate your time. Ciao Bella. I am Jack Wheaton the lord of the UK. Um, I run the uh -huh. <laughs> Ah! Stop! <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jack. It's not sponsored or anything, but Sheppies, if you want to get involved, get involved. When did you first write your CV? When I was about two weeks old, something like that. Just out of the, out of the, out of the womb, just... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, why is this uh, just on the right hand side without a bullet point? Uh, it should have a bullet point, apologies. Oh! <laughs> typo, Jack! What is going on? Oh! Reject me, reject me, reject me. I love how they still like. Oh my god, your bullet point is a different size! This is so triggered! Mm. It is a different size. Can you please change that? I'll later change those, sorry guys, apologies.